Welcome back, everybody. I'd like to start off by recognizing my favorite hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens, for almost winning the Stanley Cup this year. They've got 24, would have been 25. They came oh so close. They're one of the original six NHL teams, starting in 1909. The Toronto Maple Leafs have the second most cups, but only 13. I've been a fan since 1966, 67 when the Maple Leafs last won the Stanley Cup in Canada's centenary. We were 100 years old in 1967. Montreal won it the following year and several times since. But today, I want to talk about projectile motion. Imagine something being tossed in the air, like a baseball, or hit in the air like a golf ball. Even a hockey puck will follow a path like this, but it's just hard to notice because the curvature is not so dramatic. It's going to be just something like that if the angle is small, which it normally is, and the speed is high, which it normally is. My least favorite, might be your favorite, type of projectile motion is, you guessed it, projectile vomiting. Not the most pleasant topic, but follows the same physics. By the way, physics is fun, fascinating, and fantastic. I'm not a mathematician, believe it or not. I'm a physicist. Mathematicians are, I better make sure no one's looking, geeks. Physicists are cool. So let's look at this motion. I've tried to draw it symmetric. It's an actual parabola at least to a first approximation. So the portion going up is symmetric with the portion going down. Let's think of a golf ball. So it, it's hit at ground level, lands at ground level. We give it an initial speed, V, on an angle theta. If you consider the speed and the angle together, then we call that the velocity put an arrow on the V. So we, we use V from velocity for the speed for some dumb reason. The highest point it reaches is here. And the only acceleration or change in velocity is vertical. I'll use a wiggly line to represent that. That's the acceleration due to gravity. When it lands, because what goes up must come down, basically. The speed with which it hits will be the same as the speed with which it was launched, and it's at the same angle. Now, this is all in the absence of air resistance. Air resistance is a form of friction. We're going to neglect that to keep things relatively simple. <coughs> so the maximum height I'm going to call capital H. The horizontal distance I'm going to call R for range. And the time it's in the air, I'm going to call capital T, and I'll put it up in the air since that's the time in the air. See what I did there? The acceleration due to gravity, which is how quickly the speed changes or the velocity changes, is down. So we say negative 9.8 meters per second per second or meters per second squared on the surface of the Earth. It varies slightly. If you go up to the top of Mount Everest, it won't be quite as much. So I'm choosing this to be negative because I choose positive y is up. Now you don't need to put the plus sign there. You could just say y is up. Or if you want to use a contraction, you could say y is up. If you don't choose up to be positive, then I will tell you to, you guessed it, y is up. In physics, it's quite important that you get the directions correct between positive or negative. And as far as going to the right, we'll call that positive as well. So I'll just say do right. So this is the x-axis, the horizontal position. This is the y-axis, it's the vertical position, or you could say the height. Now, Let's see if we can get formulas for capital R, capital H, and T. In 
involving D and theta. How can we go about doing that? Well, let's start off with the definition of acceleration. Acceleration in physics is the change in velocity delta V over the time. The change in velocity is the final velocity minus the original velocity over t. Now let's consider the entire path from here to here. The final velocity is dependent on this vector and the original velocity is dependent on that vector. So let's break down this velocity vector into its two components or its two parts. There's the horizontal component which we'll call vx because it's in the x direction. And by the way, that's a constant. Because in the absence of air resistance, it, there's nothing to slow it down horizontally. In the vertical direction, it's this arrow here. We're going to call that v1 in the y direction. Now that changes. What this means is that every second, the, the vertical speed decreases by 9.8 meters per second. That's 9.8 meters per second per second. So at some point it's going to reach zero. At this point here, the vertical or the y component of the velocity will be zero. We'll still be going horizontally at this speed. So at this point, that arrow should be the same as this one. We did that a little bit too short. But the vertical speed is zero. So if I consider, like I said, the motion from here to here, then the final velocity at this point is negative v1 vertical because it's going down and it's the same amount as this one going up. So it's the opposite of that minus, because of the formula, this one again, so another v1 vertical divided by the time. So I get negative two of those. Divided by the time. Now remember, this was negative g. The acceleration is that. And we, we used g for the positive value 9.8. So this is negative g. Now, we need to say a bit more about these two components of the original velocity. <clears throat> Based on this triangle, this one here is v sine theta. I'll explain that a bit more in a second. And this one is v cos theta. Now to see that, if you look at this triangle, we know by definition opposite side to this angle, which is this one, v1y divided by the hypotenuse, which is v, is the sine of the angle. So if I rearrange this formula, I get v1 vertical is v times sine theta. That's what I wrote here. And if I change this to vx, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, that by definition is the cosine of theta. Most of you probably know that. So if I multiply both sides by v, I get vx equals v cos theta. So if I put this all together, what do I get? Now let me make some room here. So back to the beginning over here. The, the minus signs can be canceled out. Um, this t becomes the, the K 
capital T, so I guess I'll put it over here, 2 V1 vertical divided by the capital T, because we're talking about the, the entire path is equal to D, or if I substitute this for V1 vertical, I get capital T equals, and basically this is what's the position of those two, 2 V sine theta over G. And you might not have thought it was going to be that easy to derive, or that simple, but that's the formula for the time in the air. Now you might wonder, when is the time a maximum? Well, of course, if you increase the speed, it'll go higher, so that's kind of obvious. But in terms of the angle, at what angle will the time in the air be a maximum? Well, it's if theta is 90 degrees, because therefore sine theta is its maximum value of 1. So if you want something to go as high as possible, you've got to shoot it straight up in the air. Not particularly helpful for baseballs or golf balls, but if, let's say on Independence Day, we were talking about that last time, you want to celebrate with fireworks, you probably want to shoot them straight up in the air. So the formula tells you what the maximum should be. I think I'll leave it at that for now. In the next video or two, we'll talk about the range and the time in the air. I mean, uh, the maximum height, pardon me. <laughs> In the meantime, shoot for Montreal. Take care.